What's up, everyone? This is Greg with SportsRehabExpert.com and On Track Physiotherapy in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today, we're going to be talking about three exercises to train your foot for the three purposes that your foot functions for using one product. That product is called the Blackboard, uh, an awesome product. You can get access to it. I'll put, uh, I'll drop a link in the comment section below. Uh, if you use the uh, the code SRE for Sports Rehab Expert, SRE, you can get a 10% discount on this product if you want to utilize it for your gym, uh, for your clinic, or at home. So the three main functions of the foot, you can think of it as going from external rotation to pronation to external rotation, or more or less just transition, heel strike, midfoot, and toe off. We can think about those three things. The foot shape in those two uh, positions are external rotation at heel strike, pronation or internal rotation before we, uh, as we propel ourselves, put force into the ground, and then transition into the toe off as we get ready to go to the next foot. So again, three shapes we can think of external rotation as supination, that would be this arch position. Key point to this is that when we initially heel strike, we're in supination, or before we start to take our shin or our center of mass over top of our foot, this initial heel strike and this initial supination phase is as the shin is facing backwards or there's this obtuse angle here at the foot because our foot is downward. Um, we're not yet transitioning the shin forward. So as you pronate, the shin transitions forward and then as you toe off, the shin is still forward. So there's two points of external rotation, which is the first one at heel strike when your shin is backwards, then you go into internal rotation, and then through the windlass mechanism going through your great toe, that's when the second external rotation will take place throughout the foot. So the three exercises that accompany this with the blackboard, first one is uh, working on that initial supination phase or trying to delay propulsion. Uh, so a simple exercise that we do for this, we put our adjustment system so that most of the most of the adjuster boards are at the top to make this really firm and stable. And then at the bottom, we're going to allow for some rotation to work on supination. So if you put it on the ground, you can see here how I can just collapse into pronation. But if I lift the inside aspect of the unit up, I'm going to be working supination and you'll feel the foot with this sort of activity. Now, what we can do here is we can then work on holding it for sustained holds and then work on also transitioning into a single leg balance activity where you're then holding this position, feeling your arch work in this position. You also should notice a stance like glute kicking on with this activity as well too. So from the front side, Again, we're creating that arch, keeping the forefoot down, rear foot is externally rotating, forefoot is internally rotating, keeping the toes relaxed, transitioning onto one foot, and you can see how I have to work on rear foot external rotation to be able to help hold this position, which again activates the arch, but it'll also delay propulsion. So propulsion is an internal rotation mechanism, so internal rotation at the hip would be rotating towards the stance leg. So as we posteriorly tilt, I'm going to reach across to drive just a little bit of internal rotation at the hip, all while delaying internal rotation down at the foot. So this is going to delay that propulsion. This is a super useful activity for someone when they're walking or when they're moving, just collapses excessively down into pronation and has no control over that pronation. Pronation isn't bad, we just need to have control over it and need to delay it so it doesn't happen too soon. So the timing of that is super important. So we can train the arch with this exercise by working on external rotation at the rear foot, internal rotation at the forefoot, balancing on a single leg, doing a little bit of a posterior tilt, should feel arch, should feel glute and stance leg, and then driving a little bit of internal rotation through the opposite arm reach slightly across the body while trying to maintain external rotation at the rear foot, 
internal rotation at the forefoot, essentially delaying propulsion or delaying pronation. So that's exercise number one. Exercise number two is a slightly different setup here where we're going to actually be working on developing pronation. This is useful for someone who has a very high arch or a rigid foot. Um, still useful for someone who doesn't who has a flatter foot because they need to learn how to control pronation and move in and out of pronation. So again, any foot type it's effective for, but what you're going to notice is we have a heel rocker and then we rock, uh, we kind of drive midfoot pronation. So the setup here, all that it is is just kind of a walking leg stance and you're just going to shift that knee forward. Again, the tibia moving forward is going to drive internal rotation. But now, because we have the heel elevated and we're driving ourselves into unlocking that midfoot to allow someone to experience pronation, this is a great weight shifting activity. Excellent for somebody who is in uh, more of that rigid, supinated foot, but also useful for anybody to teach them how to transition in and out of that uh, pronation, supination pronation, supination, transition in and out of those two foot shapes. So great activity that you can do there. You can then take it, put it in the front. This will still drive some of that pronation, but now you're going to get a little bit of great toe extension with that as well too. So we know that the next phase of this is going into toe off. So that's exactly what we can start transitioning in and out of, is working on pronation, foot flatting, toeing off. Pronation, foot flat, toe off. And again, we can just sit here and kind of work on pronation, supination, flattening the foot, raising the foot, flattening, raising, and then when we have that down, we'll then transition to toe off. Again, nice activity to get the foot used to towing off during that gait cycle after experiencing external rotation, that initial supination, into pronation, and then resupinating. Finally, we can work that final stage, which is the resupination phase, which is essentially just a heel raise. Um, so working that great toe extension, as well as calf strength. So this is your standard heel raise, but with a little bit of a great toe extension bias just so you work that mobility in the great toe as you strengthen the calf. I'm not too concerned about balance with this one, so you can hold on to something, you can hold a weight as you're doing this to challenge you a little bit further, but this would be training that resupination phase and that toe off phase of the gait cycle in addition to that walking exercise that we had just done prior to that. So again, three exercises to train the foot for the three purposes of the foot with one piece of equipment. That piece of equipment is the Blackboard. Head on over. I got a link to the website down in the comments and utilize that 10% discount code, which is SRE, to get a 10% discount code for yourself at home, in the gym, or in your clinic.